I am very much a short forward girl. And no, I am not talking about my posture or length. When spinning, I default to a short forward draft or a worsted drafting method. But recently, I have acquired this braid, which is a mixture of Zwartbless and Southdown. And while I was sampling it on my spindle, I realized, damn, this drafts so smooth. Maybe this is the perfect opportunity to practice my long draw or woolen drafting. That's it. That's the video. We're just going to practice long draw uh, and or woolen drafting. So this is a braid. from Regenbogenwolle, point DE, so from Germany. The colorway is copper corn, Southdown and Zwartbless Tweed. Next to it being a practice for uh, a woolen draft, I might also do little fun spinning techniques and maybe make a two pie fractal with it. And now I'm going to split the braid lengthwise in the middle, approximately. And then one bobbin, I'll just spin it as is. And for the second, I'm going to split it down the middle another time. And for this practice, I will be using Christine, my Ashford, my vintage. Ashford traditional because I have said before she has a very smooth pull. I can finagle with her brake like very specifically. I think this wheel will be the best to practice this. Well, not new for me method, but a not as natural to me method. You get what I'm saying? Oh. Break wasn't attached, and it's not really taking up the poppin, is it? I'm doing it, but I'm going to just bring you closer that, so that you can actually see what I'm doing. You see? I can even do it a little bit unsupported. Ah! Oh, this does feel a little bit um, anxiety inducing because I, I don't have as much control over it as, or well, I feel like I don't have as much control over it as I'm used to with my worsted drafting. I'm now at a point where I'm actually comfortable enough to keep spinning like this and also talk to the camera. That was fast, that was like only an hour of practicing. I do realize if you are just here for the vibes, for the shenanigans, if you are not a spinner or if you're just a beginning spinner, then maybe all I have said previously is a little bit confusing. Now, I do not pretend to be an informational or educational channel with tutorials, but it might be in everyone's best interest that I explain some of the stuff that I have said. Because woolen spinning, well, of course this is woolen spinning, you're spinning wool, aren't you? And isn't worsted a type of yarn thickness? Yes, but also no. Spinner's lingo can get quite confusing very fast. Now, what I mean with worsted and woolen, or what we spinners mean with worsted and woolen, is the way 
it is drafted, how the fibers are allowed to spin over under each other. When you're doing a worsted spin, a short forward spin, you don't allow the twist to come between both your hands, to come into the fiber supply. Um, and you guide the twist along the fibers and that way no air gets trapped inside, it's just fibers, it's very stable, very hard wearing, very well, more consistent mostly. Woolen yarns, the twist gets more free play. The fibers are allowed to just grab onto one another and, you know, find their own way into the yarn. And this traps a lot more air, making it a more loftier, airier, more lightweight yarn mostly. With worsted spinning, most of the fibers are also all aligned in the same direction. Woolen spinning, they can actually just go everywhere they want. And this is how the air gets trapped. And it's supposed to be also warmer because more air means more insulation. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just doing something. But you do see the difference with what I'm doing right now and what I am doing mostly, which I shall put a overlay video over here right now. Thank you, Editing Jente. getting a little bit too thin and not enough twist, you see? <sighs> this is practice, 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 practice. Here we have our first bobbin of woolen spun singles. It is a very squish. This is both a proud and a humbling moment. For, well, actually, this went pretty fast. I got the hang of it pretty fast. I do think my extensive practice with spindle spinning has helped loads with this, since uh, when I'm support spindle spinning or clasped in hand spindle spinning, it's also a woolen draw just because I only have one hand to draft with. Now this is also a humbling result. As in, this is my first woolen spun single in my entire spinning career and that entire spinning career also consists almost of two years on YouTube. Like, I am quite surprised that there is no r slash craft snark thread about me just going like, this YouTuber doesn't know what she's talking about. Why is this inexperienced person on the internet? Please don't go make that craft snark thread right now. Um, I am much too sensitive for that, thank you. But then again, we don't all have to be generalists, right? We don't all have to have all the skills. I'm a pretty mean short forward spinner, so I'm a specialist maybe. However, this was nice. Don't think I am going to become a complete woolen spinner after this, but um, this yarn might convince me to, to try it more. Anyway. I'm going to take a break because it was a little bit testing on my shoulders 
and I will return to you when we spin this. It is time to make this spin a fractal spin. Is this another term that confuses you and you think spinners, what on earth is going on? Don't worry, I shall explain if I get my leader through the orifice. A fractal, ladies and gentlemen, is a mathematical figure that is a never-ending repeating image of the self. So this is an image of well, what we spun earlier, but we're going to do it two times. So the self gets doubled and then plied again. <laughs> I'm not a mathematician. Clearly not. Clearly not. But that's the gist. It's just an image that gets repeated infinitely. And then you get all these cool little stuff. All those wonky... You know what I mean? Yes. The main reason for me doing a fractal spin with this fluff is that um, there is only one bit of this very vibrant orange and I am um, not secretly just openly in love with this color and I want it to be in my yarn multiple times that's what's going to happen right now oh no it has turned itself around the axle god dang it why would you do that yeah we're off It's been a week. Let's continue and let's hope I still know how to do a long draw. It's been a week, especially because videos like this, when it's not a long-winded project, I just film on Sundays, so you saw me start on Sunday. Today is Sunday again and maybe we finish this today? That would be a noise. <laughs> anyway, let's do it. Like it shows a mist. Mm -hmm. Now I do believe that the 100 days of spindle spinning challenge that I did over the months of December, January and February have helped me a lot with uh, grasping the technique of this uh, long draw. However, someone has pointed out and it actually never occurred to me that when I'm support spindle spinning, I'm actually parking and drafting. And then I've been like trying to not do that, but my brain just doesn't want to work other way. There is something about the mechanics of it that it does not want to accept. So, well, I'll just continue park and drafting for my support spindle spinning until the end of times, I guess. We've got a little bit of VM in our braid. Let's pretend this has granted me a wish. So, we have finished our second bobbin. Now, personally, I think the color flow looks a lot, a lot more interesting on, on this one, where it was quartered strips. So, uh, I'm kind of regretting that I didn't go like quartered and eight strips. Too late now, we have spun this, we're going to ply it now. Now, before we are going to ply, I must say that the previous clips you have seen were the moments where the long draw spinning went pretty good because of my vanity. But I have to admit that spinning was at best awkward and at worst like, just plain bad. And I have the evidence to prove. My floor is littered with these bits where there wasn't enough twist or... You know, I'm also going to say it's not entirely because I am an inexperienced long draw spinner, but also um, there is a lot of this tweedy material in there. And sometimes that just packed together and put a real break on the fiber and then just 
came out at once, but just a bunch of Tweety bits is not going to make a sturdy yarn. So then it just broke and that happened quite a lot of times. Anyway, let's ply this. So far, my endeavors to make this a fractal yarn, like... I was way off with splitting this braid in two. I'll just make a plying bracelet, I guess, and add to whatever we already have. It is also the case that the first bobbin that I spun, which is the one that is now still halfway left, was much more consistent and much thinner than the one I did today. So um, I made a backwards progress on my long draw practicing. Beginner's luck? I don't know. Or maybe I went a lot more with the supported long draw method than today. I really tried to spin it unsupported. And then maybe it got a lot thicker, less consistent. Oh, and neat trick that I learned ever since my last um, Tour de Fleece. You can pause your plying bracelets and start a new one by sliding it off. No more dislocating my middle finger. No more trapping my blood and making it purple. Nice. Was I the only one that didn't know about this? Or uh, did, did I just teach you something new? Oh my god, oh my god, this yarn is exceedingly bouncy and fluffy. I need to contain myself, not to immediately buy another braid of this exact color just, just to make an entire garment out of it because this would feel so nice. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a good yarn, however frustrating some of the process of spinning it might have been. It's not entirely consistent, of course, that's what I have already said, but it just, I feel like, I feel like it is this yarn's destiny to not be consistent. It looks so good. I know I am a short forward girly, but this yarn might convince me otherwise. I do understand why people like woolen yarns. I am grasping the concept. The concept is this. Now, it's also not balanced, you see. There is a bit of energy in there. Um, to make it even fluffier, I will wet set the skein and thwack it. Maybe that will also distribute the twist so that it gets a little bit more balanced. I don't know. And you will not know because I will not put it in this video. Maybe I'll make a community post or something, but um, deadlines are a thing still. It's like, of course I'm going to show you the fluffed up post thwacking yarn. What did you think? A 
I'm not sure whether you can actually see the difference, but this has floofed up tremendously and has also lost a bit of its energy. It's a perfect yarn right now. If at all possible, I'm even more excited about this yarn. Look at it! I'm also not sure whether you can see the difference, but this is a worsted spun yarn. Um, maybe it's not a real good point of comparison because this is a completely different fiber. This is merino, well not completely different fiber, but different sheep. This is merino and then this is, as I said, a Zwartbless Southdown blend. Back to Studio Yent. Oh, I've got so many ideas for this, but I only have 252 meters. What is your favorite once cane pattern that would benefit the beauty and the fluffiness of this yarn? Tell me in the comments. I would like to know because, oh, I want this yarn as a finished object. I want to see how it knits up or weaves up maybe? I know my brain goes defaulting into knitting. So yeah, let me know any patterns that you would knit or maybe weave with this yarn. And then also let me know, are you a woolen drafter or a worsted drafter? What is your favorite technique? I will most certainly practice with this a lot more. The process, because I am so inexperienced, was quite frustrating, but the yarn is worth it. It is worth it. Now, if you like these kind of fiber shenanigans, then maybe you could like, comment or subscribe. But of course, that is all up to you. And as for me, I will see you in a next video. But before you do that, maybe another video where I spin an entire chaos yarn. Bye. <laughs>